Welcome back to Twin Stick Garage. Happy Saturday. So, it's uh, been a couple weeks since I actually had the truck painted. Again, did the paint job myself and of course I was all excited about it at first and it looked all shiny to me but now that I've kind of let it sit and settle and harden and the honeymoon of the, uh, the paint job is over, I'm actually, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not blown away by the, uh, by my work. I mean, it's not bad, like I've said before, but it's, it's not that great either. There is a lot of, there's a lot of dust and muck in it, and that was, you know, just, I couldn't do, I did my best with it, trying to make a paint booth out of my garage here, but it just didn't turn out that well. And I got some, I got some pretty good orange peel. It's not as bad as when I first painted the back of the cab and the, and the front of the bunk, but it ain't that great. So, I, uh, I could have done one of two things. I could have sanded it with 320 and tried again. But then I thought, well, before we do that, that's, uh, that's kind of giving up, I guess you could say. Maybe we could salvage this. So I've been, obviously love YouTube, and I've been watching a lot of videos on cutting and buffing. So in a lot of cases, paint jobs need to be kind of wet sanded down a little bit with some super high grade like 1500 or 2000 to get rid of orange peel or any little nonsense little bits like this crap in here lots of fluff so and then uh, and then buff it down with some rubbing compound and then polish it back out and wax it so I'm gonna give that a go I've, I've never done that again this whole channel is about learning new things so you know, I was talking to Mrs. Twin Sticks and the kids and they were saying, well, what do you want for Father's Day? And I said, you know what I really could use? A cordless Milwaukee polisher. So how about that? So thanks family, I really appreciate that. And we're gonna, we're gonna put it to good use and see if we can't turn this half-ass paint job into a mirror. So first up, I thought what I'd do is give Snowman a bath and wash out all the dust, what's left of it, and get all the dust off the paint, and then we can uh, we can start learning how to how to wet sand. I'm gonna shine, 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 see me shine. With a little luck and a greenback dollar, you're gonna see me shine. I like living easy, I like being free. Living free and easy brings out the best in me, makes me shine. It's a complete lack of respect for the law. Okay, so I got a whole bunch of goodies here. And I have to say that I went to KMS Tools and Equipment on the west end of Edmonton. I've never shopped there before, but man, they've got some good stuff. I, uh, I was impressed. I actually had a whole aisle for, uh, for buff buffing and polishing. So they had all kinds of the, the good stuff that I needed. So I'm still, a, I'm still a fan of Princess Auto, but man, they've got some, uh, they got some good gear there and lots of Milwaukee. Once again, uh, Milwaukee's still not a sponsor. I'm still waiting for the phone call, guys, but until then, I'll keep, uh, I'll keep buying these tools and, and using them. I mean, if you think about it, that orbital sander, I pretty much sanded the entire truck with this guy. Other than that, uh, that uh, air sander that I bought for blocking, I did the whole truck numerous times with this little, this little orbital. So, okay. Uh, so I guess I'll take that out of its package there. And well, no, I guess first up I gotta, I got to do some sanding. So some of the tricks that I've seen on the internet there is guys will take half sheets of uh, 1200 or 1000 or 1500 sandpaper and they'll fold it into threes, overlap it, and then just hand sand. But I found these little 1200 grit 
sanding blocks. They already kind of got a foam block, so it keeps it soft. And it's a pack of two if I can get into it. So something like that. I think that'll work quite nice for just lightly, lightly wet sanding. And so I got a, uh, a pail full of water. I put a little splash of dish soap in there. Uh, some of the guys on the, on the YouTube channels there were saying that having just a slight amount of soap helps to uh, keep from getting scratches and keeps the area um, flowing. So again, I've never done this before. I just watched some videos, but I mean, I watch videos to learn how to paint and that kind of worked out. So why not, uh, why not keep going? So what I'm probably gonna do is try the, the top first, because a couple of reasons. Uh, you start at the top and work your way down, but then also if I screw anything up or, or uh, it doesn't turn out, at least it's on the top part, it'd be easy to correct up there. Or if I don't correct it, you'd never see it anyway. So what we'll do is we'll get uh, the camera set up and we'll, we'll hop up there and see if we can't do some wet sanding. I correct it, Sheriff. So just for fun, I thought what I'd do We'll draw a line right in the middle. And what I'm going to do is we're going to tape it off. So I'll sand this side and I'll leave that side for later just so we can kind of do a comparison and see how this worked. Something like that. Okay. So Okay, so I got some water there, and it seems crazy to be standing on a fresh paint job, but... So what they were saying is, is uh, the video that I was watching, is don't go forward and backwards, because naturally your fingers will push down, and you'll get the, you'll get the line. So they say, side to side, oh, and this is, this hurts to, to sand in your paint job, it feels so wrong. Oh man, it's making scratches, but... Oh, what do you do? I guess that's how you get rid of the, the orange peel. And I hope this works. Okay, I can see a little. Yeah, actually it does. It takes it down. There was a little, there was a little nib there. And just by working it, it actually took it down. I definitely don't want to use any any power tools on this. You'll take a little too much. So essentially what it's doing is it's just taking the clear coat and sanding down the high spots. I think that's what orange peel pretty much is. It's just a bumpy mess on the top layer. So you're just sanding off the high spots. And then of course this is going to put scratches in the paint, but that's where the cutting compound and the buffing wheel comes in. Dollar and a half. Dollar and a half for two cheeseburgers. And Dr. Pepper, make it fast. I'm in a goddamn hurry. Hush puppies, daddy. <laughs> oh, there's so many lines in this show that just kill me. Somebody chasing you? Ain't nobody chasing me, boy. Much obliged. My family gets so tired of me quoting lines from this movie. So just like all things related to auto body, this can be an iterative process where you can have, do it multiple times. So you can sand and then you can cut and buff and then it can still not be quite the way you want it. So then you, you start wet sanding again, but at least get some practice up here and see how this process works in real life. Okay, so what I'll do is We'll dry this up now. 
and see how it looks. So it should look dull, obviously, because we we kind of sanded off the clear coat. Well, not sanded off, but we sanded down into the, the clear layer. Now this is a single stage paint, not base clear. Oh yeah, so when you dry it, probably can't see in the camera there, but so it's obviously dull now, but I can still see, so it's smooth here, but there's still orange peel there, but there's less of it. So I think I'll keep sanding on the, on the front half here, but yeah, this, this should work. All right, I'll just keep at it. We stay and watch, Daddy. You stay and watch the game. I'm going back. Well, this is nice because I don't have a an air compressor hammering away and having to wear hearing protection, and I'm not putting a ton of dust in the air like the old Charlie Daniels song. I was swinging ground to put a ton of dust in the air, so I don't have to wear a respirator. I don't mind this. When I was Googling this morning, um, uh, polishing compounds and stuff, trying to find a place that would sell them. There's actually companies that, that do this. So you can take your old vehicle in or faded vehicle, or I guess for guys like me that where the paint wasn't quite right, you can take it into them and they'll, they'll do all this cut and buff, but I like doing things myself. It's always fun learning new skills. And this one didn't seem that hard. If I can get the paint onto the truck, I'm sure I can figure out how to, how to shine it up. Okay, so that's obviously the, oh, the sun and the lights are shining on it. So shiny, but dust in it. And then this is the, the other side that's been sanded and you can see the difference. So it's made it kind of dull. And this, again, I'm trying to get it. You can see the scratches, but we should be able to, to polish those out. The, uh, if I can get it close. So this is pretty decent here. And there was a little bit of orange peel. And you can still kind of see it. So you can see where I sanded, it's taken it down. So I might do a, a little more, but it's almost gotten rid of it. Or at least leveled it out some. Okay. Well, maybe what we'll do is we'll We'll try a buff and see how that works, see how that turns out. Okay, let's open up my my minty Father's Day present. I guess my uh, Traeger smoker is going to have to wait another year. Now this is just the tool. It didn't come with the, oh, it came with a whole bunch of loose parts. It didn't come with the battery, but I already got a couple of those. Oh. Oh, yeah. Can't beat a good old Milwaukee tool. Okay. I like the idea of it being cordless. You kind of got to pick a horse with these battery powered tools because you end up getting the batteries and the chargers and you can't really change after that. All right, so you can do different speeds, 800, 1200, 16, 2000. So I think you start low, maybe you do like a 1000. Okay, and so this is a, a wool buffing pad. I wonder if I can use this to polish aluminum, this fancy Milwaukee buffer. I can't see why you couldn't. All right, let's grab a battery. Oh, oh, careful Mark, tighten that up. Make music with it. All right, so what I got here is called a liquid ice extra cut advanced polishing system. So, I think it's, a, it's designed to 
Uh, design to use the more aggressive polish is needed. The product will remove sanding scratches 1200 and finer and swirl marks, haze or oxidation on fresh or cured automotive paint. Uh, put your buffer between 1000 and 1500, apply medium pressure, use a wool pad, blah, blah, blah. So, what I'm gonna do is put a little bit, now normally, oh, there's Mrs. Twin Sticks, I better see what, what she wants. So, put a little bit of this compound, oh, it needs to be shaken up a bit. There we go. Now they say to put it on the, put it on the buffing pad and then move it around a little, smear it in and then we'll get going. want to burn the paint you're just trying to buff out those buff out those uh, scratches Put a little more on there some is good more is better and I can see why they want you to smear it in because it does spray out splatter out a little bit the evidence in the car. Put the evidence in the car. Put this works because I don't want to have to paint this truck again. <laughs> oh, that's a good scene. When uh, when Snowman pulls into Lamar's Sportsman's Club for the uh, for some fuel and some groceries and gets in a fight with the uh, the bikers. Interestingly enough, I was uh, I was actually at that spot recently. So check this out while I continue polishing. All right. Well, I couldn't come to Georgia without coming to see another uh, another famous filming location from my favorite movie. I knew you was coming. Oh, snowman. So this doesn't look like much now, but at one time... The snowman truck came rolling down and pulled right in here. Fill her up, hoss. Fill her up, hoss. Yeah, the only way you can really tell that this was a gas station at one time was the, the island where the fuel pumps were. Oh. How much are you, Billy? Uh, 73, uh, 84. I should sign the island and say Twin Sticks was here. Yeah, so this, this building's in pretty rough shape. But this would have been the, uh, this would have been the location where Snowman and Fred got into a little bit of a, a tussle. That's a big 10-4. And got tossed out. I don't know if it's, yeah, it's all locked up. I don't know if there's much to see in there. Yeah, isn't that cool? So again, not much to show, not much to show that it was actually part of the movie. I mean, it's almost 50 years later and it's pretty rough now. Yeah, this is the, this is the actual spot. Very 
very cool. Now, if that's the case, and he got into the truck after he got beat up by the uh, by the bikers, he would have been pulling out something like this, and then the bikes would have all been staged here, and he would have blown over all of them right about in this spot. <laughs> Ah, that's cool. I love finding old pieces of history. Not much left now. I should buy this old building and bring it back to its former glory. Far out. Okay, so now I'll clean off the excess. And there's still some scratches in there, so what I'm going to try, I wonder if I got to keep doing another round of it, but it's definitely flatter, not quite as much. Not quite as much orange pills, at least in this back half here. And yeah, maybe I'll do one more round of wet sanding and then we'll do that again. Okay, that's end of round two. And we'll try and clean off that rubbing compound. Oh, yeah, that's looking nice. Okay, then the final step I want to do is put on a little bit of wax and buff that in. So we'll change, we'll change our pad here. Okay, and I got, I don't know what this one's called, polishing pad, foam pad for final finishing and polishing. So again, when I go to do the, the whole truck, this is just kind of my, my sample area. When I do the whole truck, I'll do it with rubbing compound first and then wax the whole truck. But we're just trying to do a, like I say, a test. So let's put a little wax on the buffing wheel. Test. I'll we'll just give a little hand polish. Oh yeah. There. So of course the light is is making this brutal. So that's the the before side. And then that's the after. Okay, now I just got to do the rest of the truck. Oh, so there's a good comparison there. So this is the before side, and you can see the, the connectors of the different, or the hinges, I guess you call them, are kind of fuzzy on this side. And then look how clear they are on this side. Yeah, the camera doesn't lie. So it definitely makes a difference, putting in a little, little elbow grease, a little bit of wet sanding, and a little bit of cut and buff. Oh yeah, that's gonna look good when we get it all done. Oh, this kid, this kid, this kid was great. They, they used to call him Spitshine Tommy. I swear to God, oh, he make your shoes look like mirrors. Click the Twin Stick Garage logo to subscribe. 
and be sure to comment down below. I encourage you to share any thoughts, feedback, suggestions, stories, or even just a simple hello. I read and appreciate every one. And if you really want to help out the channel, head over to my Patreon, a subscription-based service that you can sign up and see videos before they're released on YouTube. I'm also going to be posting some content that you can't see anywhere else, so go check it out.